Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome on this Wednesday night. Welcome everyone that is there in the chat and welcome everyone that will join or watch the replay later on. Tonight, we're going to be playing with the wax melts, our new stampers. We have a little wax melting furnace and a little cute little spoon and all the things. So I already have my little tea light going and that spoon is warming up. Hello, Brenda and Mary. Bo, Rachel, I see a lot of my friends in the chat there. Hello, Gail. All right, so I am going to go down to my desk here and we'll talk about all of our new wax products. There are lots and lots in the um, shop online, so you can go and check those out. They're really fun to play with. They add just a fun little touch either to your cards or to seal your envelopes. And before you ask, I know you're going to ask, you can um, use those on your envelopes to go through the mail. You will talk about how I adhere those because you will want to adhere those really well and how to mark your envelopes and things like that. So without further ado here, I'm going to go down to my desk view and I have our little Be Creative silicone mat um, and there's a few different ways that you can use this. And then we'll talk about that. But you can see I have my mat here. I have our new Homestead Harvest uh, wax melts that has all the little colors that are going to match the paper pads. I have our new stampers. We have a little tractor that's adorable. The little bundle of wheat and then the cute little mushrooms. And then over here going on my left is our little wax melting furnace and then our spoon that we're going to put the wax in to melt it. Now, you may be wondering, like, Kelly, why do you need a Sharpie to uh, work with your wax stampers? And this is what I do. This is just a little tip for those of you that may want to pour wax directly onto your paper or onto your cards. So, for example, any of your wax stampers that have a direction to them, like uh, these mushrooms, obviously, if you're going to pour wax onto your card and stamp that wax directly onto your paper, you're going to want to know what direction that the stamper is going to go in. I always mark mine with a Sharpie marker. So, the 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 part that is going to face you when you stamp it, that is the part that I mark. And so I'm going to mark it on that bottom part right there at the end of those little mushrooms. So I know if I've got that little Sharpie mark facing toward me when I stamp it onto my card, I know that I'm going to get it right side up every time. So I've got my little mushrooms marked. I want to mark my little stack or my little bundle of wheat. I'm going to do the same thing and mark it right at the end of that. So I know that if I have that facing towards me, that it's going to go the right direction. Last one, that's mark the bottom of the little tractor. And I do this every time like I get a new set in when we release them. I mark them with just a little, you know, black dot, a little stripe, a little something. And then that way, every time I pull those out to use them, they're going to be all ready to go. It's just something simple that we can do. Okay, I'm going to pour our new Homestead Harvest melts into my little flexible tray. And you can see some of these and when you get them, some of them are going to be pearlescent. So like in this kind of blushy colored pink, you can see where it's going to have a little bit of sparkle to it. Some of them are matte. Some of them are sparkle. You can blend some of these together, colors that you think would work well together. Um, I'm going to be pulling out, I know, some of this really pretty teal um, because it's going to go with the die cuts that are on my card. And then this fun little tray, I just kind of like this for embellishments because you can kind of fold it up. It's flexible and then everything's going to pour back in. Okay, 
Now, when you are melting your wax, you can kind of play with how many little wax melts you want to melt to get the look that you're going for. If you kind of like it to ooze out and have kind of that rough edge, you may want to add more. Okay, so I'm going to do, let's do um, some yellow. So this like golden yellow color. I usually like to go with about three wax melts. So I'm going to add those in and my spoon is already hot. You can see it's already moving around here and melting fairly quickly because I've had that sitting there on that tea light for just a few minutes. And so I'm just going to kind of watch that, make sure it's all nicely melting down, and then I can pour it. There's a couple of different uh, ways that you can pour that. You can pour it directly on to the open portion of your little silicone mat, or if you want a perfect circle, you can pour it into the little wells here on the side. Now, this little mat is also nice if you have the little, let's say, reinkers. If you like to watercolor with reinkers, you can drop your little colors or your pigments into each well, and then all of your shades are going to stay separated. So, this little silicone mat has lots of different uses for it. You can stencil over here, you know, you can ink blend on this. It's really handy. So we're waiting for this to melt. And then I think on this one, I am going to, let's do the cute little mushrooms on this one. Let's make some little kind of mustardy colored yellow little mushrooms. So I've got that sitting there and you can see my wax is almost melted down here. Now this spoon is handy. If you'll notice here on this side, it does have a little a pour spout that's going to help you get as much wax as possible onto your silicone mat. If you don't have a mat, you could always use a piece of wax paper or something like that to, uh, you just want something that's going to release that wax melt or the little seal after you have stamped it and let it set up. So I like to hold this you know, directly over, kind of make a messy little happy pile of wax there. And I'm going to put this directly back onto the heat and you'll see why here in just a second. Okay, I've got my little mushrooms and you can see right now to you, they're upside down. I'm going to find the little Sharpie mark and then I'm going to stamp that directly into the wax. You can see right around the edges, and I'll kind of go in a little bit tighter here. Right around the edges here, you're going to see where that's going to pour out. And that where that's where it gives it that kind of vintage wax seal look. You're just going to want to let and make sure that that is going to kind of dry and set up before you pull your stamper off of the top of the wax. And so I'm just kind of letting that do its thing. And then I can probably now go ahead and pull that up. Now you'll notice mine is even releasing from the silicone mat and that's okay. You can take your finger, you can take your die pick, something like that. And you just kind of want to gently let that go. And then I've got a cute little wax melt that has the cute little mushrooms and it is all ready to go. This, our little wax stampers even have little texture lines and little details and things in that. And so this one is all cute and ready to go. Okay. So I'm going to lay the little mushrooms aside and let's try another one. Let's do the cute little tractor this time because I think I want to use the, um, wheat on tonight's card. So before I get too far. Okay. Now you see how the excess wax has puddled in the spoon. That's what I want because now if you're going to switch colors, you can take a dry cloth, a paper towel, and you can simply clean out your spoon to change colors. I like to get it hot 
and it will get hot. So make sure you hold it by the wooden handle. That way you don't burn your fingers. Okay. So now we're all nice and clean and we're ready to go. So I can lay that back down. Now I can take my red wax this time. Let's try four and let's see what kind of seepage out from the sides that we get. I'm going to make a little red tractor. We've got greens and things like that. So if you wanted to do like a little John Deere tractor or something like that, you could totally make a little green tractor, but we're going to melt this wax down and then we're going to be all ready to go. Okay. While this is melting, I'm going to look up in the comments and I'm going to see if there are any questions. Let's see here. The wax melter and supplies are going to be my next investment. Cool, Beth. All right. Um, Marsha loves the wax melts and stampers. And let's see. I see Lisa is in the chat answering questions over there. Yes, the little circles. So there's a few different ways that you can use this. Obviously, your little stampers, like if you're super organized, you can put it in there. Um, you can uh, pour your wax from your spoon in here if you want an exact circle. Um, and also this little mat is also really good. As I mentioned before, if you have, let's say, distress reinkers and you use those to watercolor, these are perfect little watercolor wells to add your reinkers into and then pick up with a watercolor brush or a water brush to then, you know, paint or watercolor onto your images and your paper and things like that. So lots of different ways that you can use the um, wax. Now, Mindy Egan, you're so fun. Mindy says, why are you so darn fun to watch? Uh, because I just talk and have fun with everybody. Let's see, Kelly, will you put one in the well to show us as well? I will. I'll do this next one in the well to show you what it looks like. Um, so we'll do that. Let's see here. All right. There's Carol. Hello. Hello, Erica. Hello. Um, Lisa, Lisa just, uh, hit the nail on the head here. She said, I like control and these wells give more control on uh, a loster um, with the wax stamper. They do. If you want it messy like this, pour it onto the open part of the mat. If you want a perfect circle, then pour it into the well. So if you, and it, again, if you like to watercolor and do different techniques and things like that, then this, and you can see this is a little mat. It, it's good for small little things. Here is an A2 size card base. And you can see where that card base is going to fit right down there. This is also a good size for if you're going to do, let's say your lovely layers die cuts and things like that. And you want to lay little die cuts and ink blend you can do that. So there's lots of different uses for this little mat besides just the wax products. So I should, I should say that it also is a really nice thickness. It's a little bit thicker than the waffle flower, um, stencil mats. I've got it here. So this is the waffle flower stencil mat. If you can see here, how thin they are, this one is a little bit thicker than that. So it's a little bit um, more, I shouldn't say heavy duty because the, the waffle flower mats are amazing. It's just a little thicker. So, all right. So we're getting our wax melted here. So I'm going to look up and see if there's any more questions here. Let's see. I think that the well would require four wax melts. Yep. I've got four in here. We're going to try it. Let's see here. Who is surprised that Lisa likes I, Mary? Exactly. See, you all are learning uh, Lisa and I. We're all like buddies here. You guys are getting to know our little quirks. Let's see. I've lived in the South for 15 years now. My sister laughs at me for picking up the accent. Oh, you just can't help it. And then when you talk to somebody, um, you know, because mine, I live, I live in South Carolina now. And so I've got a pretty thick set and I I'm from Oklahoma. So I was kind of born with it, 
But when I talk to somebody back home or talk to somebody in Texas, you know, you pick up a little bit of the twang from wherever. And so, okay, so this one is about ready to go. This is a really, really beautiful red. Okay, so that is looking good. My flame is still going. I'm going to pour it all down into here. And my wax is thick. I need to, I may need to get another um, tea light. It may be time for another tea light. I'm going to let this just sit. This may not even fill the well because it's, it's thick. It may not be getting hot enough, but I'm just going to sit here just for a second and let that pour in. Come on. It's still coming. All right. I'm going to put that down and let me find my cute little tractor because I've been playing with them. Okay. I've got my little tractor. I'm going to throw it around on my desk and then I'm going to put it down here. And then this is not even because it was so thick. It's not even going to fill the well. Okay. Pause while I add another tea light. Thank goodness I've got multiples. And then let's see if I can get my blade. I have a whole little drawer here of my wax melt stuff. Okay. And tea lights are super inexpensive. Okay. So I'm going to put that one out. We're going to put him out. You can also use your embossing heat tool to warm your spoon if you would rather do it that way. It just takes your hands, if that makes sense. Like you're not going to be hands free to be doing other things if you use your heat tool, if that makes sense. Okay, I've got my little clicker here. I'm going to get this one going. And I'm going to put that over the top. This one's going to be a good one. Okay, and I'm going to add my little spoon. And I'm watching it underneath that little furnace. Okay, now I'm going to pull this one up. And I know already, you can see just from looking at it, that it's not going to fill the well. So we're going to play again. That's okay. That's part of the fun, right? And that spoon is warming up. So let's try. I'm going to try. I'm going to do even more. I'm going to do five. We may be, there we go. Okay. So, and it's already melting because that spoon was hot. And then that new um, tea light, the flame is way up underneath the spoon because um, it's not so burned down. See how much this one had burned down? Okay. Let's see. Put it back in and melt it again. Let's see here. Oh, I could do that. Yep. We could do that, but we'll take a look. Yeah, you could totally, if you don't like the way that these turn out, you can just throw it back in there and remelt it. Let's see here. Keller, yes, you can remelt them. Absolutely. Um, she, let's see, she could have just melted it out if it didn't work out. Yes, I have remelted some of mine um, that did not come out the way. I, yes, Carol, totally could do that. All right, let's see here. Um, yes. All right, you guys are you guys are on the money here. Let's see here. It does look like that. It is fun. What do you do with them once you make them? Well, you can put them on an envelope, and we're going to talk about that. So in the store, and let me show you. I've got it pulled up on my phone. Okay, in, at, this is honeybeestamps.com right here on my phone. We have wax melt or wax seal stickers in packs. And you can see they have the little tabs on them. Now, mine, like this, are AWOL after the move. I have searched. I have looked. I need to order some more from Honeybee. I've got some other little tabs that I'm going to use tonight. 
but these are just double-sided, really nice, heavy-duty stickers that are going to stick them down and they're not going to go anywhere. So when we mentioned earlier about putting them on an envelope, you probably want to use some type of really heavy duty double sided adhesive like this. And they are perfectly round and uh, suited to go behind your little wax melt. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use uh, one of these, not this exact one, but for to add it to my card. And so we'll talk about that. Now, when you want to add these to the flap of your envelope, so let's say that you're going to seal an envelope and you're going to do these, you know, like the traditional way, like they did, you know, way back in the day when they sealed up their letters and their things like that. That's when you want to use the really good heavy duty adhesive, but you also want to mark your envelope to hand cancel for the post office to hand cancel it. That way they don't shoot it through the machine. If you mark on there and hand cancel it, in, it does take a little bit of extra postage. So I'll warn you about that. But um, I hand cancel all of my handmade cards anyway, because normally I will have some type of um, embellishment on them or I'll have some dimension with like little foam dots. I'll have something on there that I want to make sure, you know, goes through the mail fine. And so I usually have mine hand canceled every time anyway. Um, but if you do that, they will not shoot it through the machine or they're not supposed to. And I've never had issues, um, you know, with somebody receiving my cards and them being uh, smushed or anything like that. Okay, this is looking really good in there see what we've got so far. Okay, I'm going to take it and I'm going to pour it. And this one's going to be better, I think. And I'm going to let it drip in there really well. Drip, drip, drip. And you can see this one's coming out so much better. For one thing, it's hotter on that flame. And another thing, I used one more wax melt, but look and see how well that came out where you can see the bottom of the spoon. Oh, buddy, that is hot. Okay, now I'm going to take my little tractor and I'm going to put it down. And then I'm just going to let it go. Okay, so that's going to do its thing and it's going to dry up. Do you see how it filled that well this time? So we're going to have like a perfectly round little tractor that comes out. Let's see here. All right, Christina Werner. All right, you guys are just chatting away over there. Perfect. All righty. Now, while this is good and hot, I'm going to clean it out. And I want to tell you, and I'll show you here in just a second, that the bottom of your spoon will blacken. And that's okay. That's because that it's sitting right on the flame. That's not going to hurt anything. See it all kind of coming off. All right, I'm going to lay that down. And I've got my little handy dandy cloth here. And I'm going to make a mess with the soot. Okay, let's see here. How thick can you get with a wax melt if you are mailing it? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never tried like a really thick one. And so if you're wondering what I'm doing, this is rubbing alcohol right here. And I'm just cleaning my mat. So you can clean these with like an alcohol wipe or rubbing alcohol and they'll clean right up. So I've cleaned my Copic markers and, you know, everything off of my mats. Okay, that's, that's going to be good enough for now. So let's take a look at our cute little tractor and it's popped right out again. So I'm very gently just going to release that. And now I have a perfectly round wax melt with the little tractor. 
So you can see the difference now between like our little mushroom that's more free flow and then a perfectly round one. If you wanted to do a card that had like you did a design and had, you know, multiple wax melt, you know, if you wanted it kind of willy nilly and free flowing, you could do it like this. If you wanted those perfect circles, then you can pour it in the well. Okay. All right, now let's make the little wheat bundle for our card that we're going to make tonight. And I know that I want to do um, this in the teal because I'm going to use the die cuts that we used or we started on um, Monday night. Okay, now there is really dark and then there is a lighter teal that let me see which one has pearlescence no they don't that one doesn't okay so i'm going to use and i'm going to pull out the really dark let's do let's do four and i'm going to do like a free flow pour on here all right so before i do that i'm going to take and i'm going to clean this here at sizzle that's because my cloth is wet and I'm gonna clean that soot out of my spoon and set that right back down. Okay, and then now here we go. And you're gonna immediately start to see those melting down. Okay, thank you for showing the wax melting. I have wanted to try it. Yes, it's fun. Um, what a cute tray. It is cute, Mindy. And we, um, now that I'm finished with these, it's flexible. So you can pour all your little goodies, you know, back into the thing. So whether you have sequins or, um, you know, a confetti mix or something like that, it is flexible. And so you can pour it, everything right back in. But I like it for my little wax melts too. Then I'm not sitting there and doing this or trying to shake it back into the little jar. All right, so we're melting down over here. We're looking good. And it wouldn't be a crafty live without Hurricane Kelly here making a mess. Let's see here. Is that tray from Honeybee? Yes, it is. It's one of our Be Creative, um, you know, branded Honeybee products. And... I'm going to try to clean up my mess here as we visit. But, okay, let me close that so I don't spill it because that would be like me to spill it. All right, and let's see here. What were we talking about? We were talking about the wax um, silicone mat let me see if i can find it okay so it's right here so the silicone mat let me see if it's gonna pull it up so it is here online and it is 19.95 it is super thick as it mentions and it is the dimensions so the flat work area so this area here that's flat is three is four and three quarters by six inches tall and there's eight little circle areas that are, oh, this area is three by six and each well measures one and a quarter inches and is a quarter of an inch tall. So that's how um, deep it is, a quarter of an inch deep. So if you go here to dimensions, you'll be able to see, you know, all about the silicone mat. All right, so we're almost melted here. Uh, the mat is super. I just have to find, Miss Gail, you need to find um, your mat. I talked to Miss Gail a couple of days ago, maybe. Miss Gail Spresser that's there in the chat. She is one of our sweet, sweetest little ladies, and I had the pleasure of visiting with her the other day, and she was so sweet. And, um, yeah, it's fun. I get to talk to so many nice people because I'm doing the, all the customer care for Honeybee now. 
So if you ever have to email or make a phone call, you just know that Kelly may be calling you up on the phone. So it's fun to get to talk to all of our friends. And Okay, so this was four little melts. And I'm going to pour this and do like a free flow here. Out here on the open mat. There we go. And I'm going to let all that good, get good and drippy there. And I'm going to put that out. That teal, this turquoise is really pretty. Okay, so we got a good melt. We're going to sizzle for a second while my wet cloth goes on it. And now I'm all finished with my spoon. I'm just going to lay it over here to the side. Okay, so we've got this. I've got my little wheat stock. I'm going to line it up even though it's not really necessary right now. And I'm very gently going to let that see it kind of seeping around and doing its thing. I'm going to let that set up there. Let's see. Gail Spresser, you are the email person for uh, at Gail's are. Uh, I am Kelly. I am Kelly does return calls. I do Sp spoke with her last week. Oh, Paula. Hello. I telling you, I talk to the nicest people who really. So if I send, let's see what Mindy email, you're getting it. Yes, Mindy. I do. Um, Kelly is the best. Thank you, Miss Gail. I'm telling you, I have so much fun talking with people on the phone. I talked to this little lady this morning, a little er elderly lady. I had the most fun chatting with her and helping her put her order in. And she was so excited about, um, you know, she had her little list and I'm telling you, it's like, it's the most fun. Uh, just getting to chat and you all you all know that I'm like a, a chit chatter anyway and so now it's like it's like the best job ever because I get to chat with you guys in the live streams and then I get to chat with fun customers all day long so it is really fun okay I think yep we're all ready to go here so I'm just going to kind of rock this back now this one's going to stick down but look how pretty that is Look where we've got, I love like these little ripples and bubbles and stuff along the side. And I'm actually really glad that this one stuck to the mat and not my stamper because I want to show you how easy it is to release it from the mat. All you have to do is kind of, you know, bend it just a little bit and then it's just going to pop right up. And now I've got, you know, a really pretty, look how beautiful that really dark turquoise is. Um, I've got a really pretty seal now to add to my card. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in to the card that this pretty little bundle of wheat is going to go on. And I'm going to widen this out a little bit and set that aside. Let's move all that out of the way. And now I have, um, a, just a white card base. This is going to be a simple card. I've got, um, my die cuts that we used on Monday night when we made this big card with the die cuts. We did the background and we got really inky here. So I thought we're going to keep it a little more simple tonight with white on white, have the die cuts. And so these are my leftover die cuts from Monday night. So let's create a card. So what I've done is I have a sheet of white cardstock and I'm going to tilt it here so it doesn't get too bright in my lights. But this is with the burlap 3D embossing folder. Okay, so it looks like this gives all that really nice, great texture. So I've run my cardstock through there and you can really use it on any side, but I'm going to have the great texture back there and then use our fancy fall layering frames for just an added little layer. I love a little resting place. I need to adjust my lighting here. And then let's see, I've got some jute just in case I want to use that. And then I'm going to use my die cuts and make a little kind of fall arrangement here with my leftover 
die cuts. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to try to adjust this so we can see. Okay, that's better. That's a little bit better, right? All right, so it's not so bright. Okay, so let me start gluing everything down and we'll kind of chat about it. And I'm going to wipe, I want to get the soot off of my fingers so I don't get it on my pretty white cardstock. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so the first thing I, I'm going to do, and because this has been like, um, with that embossing folder, it's a little bit warped. Plus I did spritz a little water on it. So I think instead of fighting with the warped paper, I'm just gonna pop it up and it's gonna be, you know, easy peasy on there. And I think I wanna use, let's use this side. So I'm just gonna gently put just a little bit of foam tape back here. And then we're gonna pop up that little section let me find one more small little piece. So we're gonna add that down. And then the stars of this card really are gonna be those little die cuts. That's gonna be all of our color and the wax melt, of course. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this and try to get it. I'm always the worst. This is why we love liquid adhesive is because once you set down your foam tape, it's like all over. Okay, so we've got that layer. Then we've got our pretty little oval we've got going on here. Now I think this one, I'm just gonna do some liquid adhesive here. And we'll do, since we've got a lot of other dimension going on. Let's see here, you call that a little, okay. I don't know about a little. You guys may be having a whole nother conversation here. I'm just going to eyeball this one and let it kind of grab hold here. And I am going to hold it up and kind of make sure that we're looking pretty straight. Okay, so we've got some nice texture going on here. We've got our white paper, our simple white paper. Now let's do our little die cuts. I'm gonna arrange this a little bit in my fingers first, and then we're gonna glue down. Cause I know I kinda wanna intertwine the wheat and my other little flowers. and kind of make a little fall bundle here. Something like so. And I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna add, you know, little dots here and there so we can grab hold of the paper. And then I'm gonna place these way over here. Let's see if I can get them to cooperate. Way over here on the left side. And then I'm going to press. Let's get that to go down. And I'm going to press here. I can kind of adjust if I want to before that glue sets up. Okay. So I'm going to hold that down. Let's say love the fall season. I uh, get this set. Okay. All right. So those have grabbed hold. Now I made this little jute like just for a little fall touch. And I'm going to put that like it's kind of holding my little, um, my little bunch here. And I'm going to put that right there. You guys can hear my puppies. Okay. So we've got that. Now let's do our cute little wax melt and I'm going to place it right here. Do you see how pretty that's going to be? Let me go in a little bit tighter here and then you can kind of see, see how it coordinates the, the colors of the wax coordinate with the pattern papers. 
So that's kind of what's so fun is I was able to get that all to coordinate. All right, now this is where you're gonna wanna use your double-sided adhesive. And as I mentioned, mine are AWOL. So I'm using something that was just in my stash probably from way back in my scrapbooking days um, where we had, you know, those little glue dots and things from way back when. Okay, so that goes on there just like that. I'm going to place this down and I'm going to press, but I'm not going to press so hard that it breaks the wax. We don't want to do that. We just want to get all of that um, sticky adhesive to kind of grab right there. So kind of let me hold this up. See how pretty that is? Let me tilt it to where we don't have a glare. Okay, now I'm going to add a sentiment right around in here. So let me move these out of the way. And in my Misty, I have a sentiment from, let me show you, this Heartfelt Hello stamp set. And I've got this with Heartfelt Thanks. I don't know about you, but I'm always needing like little thank you cards and things. So I've got the sentiment already in my Misty with just a scrap of white paper. You could use craft paper or whatever, but I'm actually going to do a little heat embossing on this. So I'm going to use my anti-static powder, give my paper a little rub down, and then I'm going to use our embossing ink and give this a tap. And I've got wax stuff everywhere. Let me get stuff out of the way. There we go. And then I'm going to just give this a tap. Tap, tap, tap. Don't need to press hard. Tap, 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 tap. Just like that. And then I am going to add gold embossing powder because we're going to pull in like that fall feel that we have going on. So this is Brutus Monroe Gilded. It's my very favorite gold. Let's get a little coffee filter. Let's do a little sprinkle and a tap off. Okay, see how cute that's going to be? Tap, tap, tap. All right, let's see how we're looking here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I've got one little spot on the H that I want to clean up. But all you have to do is you can take like your dye pick or a dry paintbrush. Just kind of get those little particles to behave And I'm going to clean up that. And that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty neat. All right, so I'm going to take my heat tool. So now I'll put this down. Okay, so we're looking good here. All right, now I want to let this set up for just a second because that is like wet paint for just a minute. Okay, so somebody mentioned I've never had a wax melt break. They will if you're pretty rough with them because, you know, if you think about like old movies that we've seen or something like that, that's how they sealed their letters. And then when the wax was broken, you know, somebody had been into the the letter. But I mean, they will, I mean, this one's going to just bend, but they will break if you're rough with them. So, you know, let's see, let me try the little mushrooms. Oh, these are pretty flexible. And see, this may be the difference between like old timey, like back in the medieval days wax. And then this, this is going to go through the postage stuff 
just fine. Just as long as you use a really good adhesive on the back side of that. So, you know, a good double sided adhesive. Okay, so let's find the coordinating die here and use a little highlighter tape. And I'm going to get this all lined up. And I apologize if my crazy head with my crazy curly hair gets in the way. All right, we got that down. Now, let's do a little die cut here. All right, now let's see how this puppy pops out. Okay, so we've got our cute little sentiment. And then we have our pretty little fall card. And this is going to just fit and nestle. I mean, you could put it, oh, that's pretty down there too. Either way, that's going to be pretty. All right, let's do... I'm going to do a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add one of those little foam strips. I love these for little sentiments because you can hide those little foam strips right back in there and then you'll never see it. I'm going to grab hold here and then I'm just going to nestle this right down in here in that jute or twine and I'm going to make sure everything's kind of nice and straight and then just kind of pop that down. Okay, simple, super simple. I'm not going to put any other, I thought about putting pearls but I think with the embossing powder and the wax melt, like I think this keeps it really nice and simple. And it's just a really pretty little card, just like that. All right, so I'm going to set this here. And then let's go to our split screen here. All right. Okay, so I hope, I know somebody requested a wax melt live. And so I hope that that has helped you um, kind of figure it out just a little bit and maybe gave you, given you some tips and tricks and things like that. You should show the paint pen on top of the wax melt. Let me see, excuse my chest here in the view. Let me see if I can find it. Um... Okay, let me grab my stash. Okay, so I've got this one. Hold on. Let me make sure I grab the right one. Okay, so this one, we have, we carry these at Honeybee as well. Okay, see, it says pin touch and it's gold. So there's gold. There is, this one must be white. White. There is like a copper. This would be pretty for fall too, copper. There is a uh, black. See that little band here? Let's see what's this one. This one's white and there's silver. So Christmas, snowflakes and things, silver. Okay, so let's use the gold. All right, so this one is really fine tipped. I am going to take scrap paper. And I'm going to make sure that I get my paint going. Okay. So it's like a little fine tip paint pen. And what you can do is you can go through here and just add just a little hint of gold just to that raised area. I'm going right down the little stalks of wheat. And it doesn't have to be you know, perfect. You can kind of, 
go down and add. Okay, let me get it back in here. Okay, see where I've added the gold? And I'll hold it up here in just a second. And then there's a couple of little pieces of like rope or something going across there. Okay, so let's go in and then I'll tilt it in the light so you can see the gold. So that adds and see that ties in with the gold embossing powder there. But we've got all of these at Honeybee. So any kind of, any color you would really want. Gold, silver, and copper. Uh, white would be pretty if you did like a really dark navy snowflake and then added white on top of that. So, you know, a fun little, a fun little touch for that. And it just kind of makes it a little extra special there. Okay. Fun little final touch. That's, that's right. So I'm glad that I had those little paint pens handy. Okay. Yes. Adds a little detail. Yes, Beth, that was a great idea. All right, you guys, it is time for our giveaway tonight. So Lisa's going to let us know our giveaway winner. And then we will be back on Monday night. As you see. Could you use gilding wax on that? Probably. Okay, Sharon. Let me look at your name up close. Prevalof. Sharon Prevaloff. I hope I'm saying that correctly. You are the winner. Okay, Sharon. So what you need to do, super easy, if you will email me at Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I am going to email you a gift card prize. Yes, I am. But the I know what you're talking about, the Ranger like little gilding wax stuff. You probably could use that as well. I've just not tried that. The next release is in October. Our holiday release is in October. Yep. Okay. Congratulations, Sharon. Yay. All right, you guys. That is all I have for you tonight. Doing wax melts tonight was an awesome idea. Thank you for whoever said I would love to see wax melts because this was really fun sharing the evening with you guys. All right, you all, I will see you Monday evening, same time, same place. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. Bye, friends.